next on the Broadway show, Oh Mary. We're sitting down with the star of Broadway's summer comedy smash. Plus, they're the future faces of Broadway. We're celebrating the young stars of this year's Jimmy Awards. And Back to the Future is coming to a city near you. We'll meet the cast. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is the Broadway show. Broadway's biggest stars and shows are right here on the Broadway show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Let's get going. Oh, Mary is the Broadway comedy of the summer. It's a twisted and hilarious reimagining of Abraham Lincoln's wife, Mary Todd. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. Paul, look at this. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Broadway debut. How does it feel to like stand in front of this? It makes me sick to my stomach a little bit. <laughs> it's nerves, but excitement. Being on Broadway is like one of those, it's like, yeah, I would love to be a supermodel someday, or like, yeah, I would love to be a movie star. Yeah. Um, but I can't believe that it's actually real. Yeah. And for this, for this stupid show, <laughs> where I play Mary Todd Lincoln that I wrote, <laughs> it's wild. So we're gonna go sit down at Sardis because that's yes. what you do at Broadway Stars. Yeah, you sure, sit at sure, Sardis. Sure. So let's, uh, let's walk down great, together. Great. Fabulous. You know, I was actually thinking about I was, you know, you play Mary Todd Lincoln. You, yeah. you, you realize that. I, I've very, heard. very famous yeah, first lady. But you know, she used to come to New York for yeah. us, like shopping, shopping trips, spree. right? Like down Ladies Mile, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Ladies yeah. Ladies Mile. She would never be caught up here back then. I don't think so. But it was maybe, like woods um, or something. Yeah, this was woods, a farm. <laughs> this was a farm. She wasn't here to farm. No, yeah, she would come to New York on on shopping sprees, uh, and then people were mad at her because there was a war going on. Did you do deep research like that into? That's I, I did deep research like um, yeah l last night basically. Great for this interview, and that's but why. not for the show. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Sardis. Thank you. You're getting a lot of laughs now. And one thing I really love about O'Mary, I, I love seeing a real comedy that like fires on every cylinder. I mean, audiences, when I saw it at the Lortel Theater, all kinds of audiences. It felt like such a wall of laughter. Yeah, I mean, at first I, I wrote it for like my, my audience, which is just um, drunk gay people. <laughs> and um, they loved it. And then more other types of people started coming and I'm sort of weirded out by it, but 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 I love it. So what, where did this actually start? Is this just like you in front of a laptop in your it, living it, room? It started with uh, the idea for the, the play, which was um, what if Abe's assassination wasn't such a bad thing for Mary Todd Lincoln. That was like an email that I sent to myself in 2009. Wow. And then I was so scared to write it because I wanted it, I it, the idea excited me so much that I was scared that once I got it down on paper, I would be like, oh, mm. damn, it's not, there's nothing there. Then- So you lived with it, I'm I sure. lived with it and like, I would did like- Did you walk around thinking about this for Yeah, years? and I would tell people every once in a while and I was like really looking for permission from sure. someone to write it. Uh -huh. Like, you know, I would tell a friend about the idea, hoping that they would just like grab me by the shoulders and be like, this is the best thing I've ever heard. You need to write this right now. Instead, my friends had natural reactions, which was, which were like, that sounds great, you should do it. And I would be like, okay, so you hate it and um, I'm never gonna write it, it's stupid, it's stupid, never mind, forget it. During lockdown, um, I was, I had nothing going on and so I was like, well, now or never. Did it just yeah. come out of you? Like It, it actually did. It feels that's like, an when, you, when you watch it as an audience member, it just feels like it just kind of flies and I just, I, I picture it just flying out of your brain. It, it kind of, I mean, I guess because I had been stewing on it so long and like, sending myself little ideas here and there. Um, but it was just one of those really, really, really rare things that just poured out of me in like two days. Everything else that I've written has taken months, years to like even get to a decent, uh -huh. I think, decent place. Um, but this just sort of like bolted out of my... Do you like playing with real uh, historical characters? and adding a, a queer uh, lens to it? Yeah, I like playing um, people that sort of aren't known for like big characteristics, you know, like I used to do this really awful, terrible, like 
bastardization of an impression of Bernadette Peters because she's not someone that it has like, she's not super mannered and so I could just make up um, a whole other character that she's not and then um, I've done the same thing to Mary Todd Lincoln. So Mary Todd Lincoln had dreams of being a Bernadette Peters, being a performer. Right? According to me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exciting. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think we're in a world where it's sort of like, what is the truth about history? Yeah, and, yeah. You know, there's sort of this thing about, well, which 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 version of a story are you reading? Yeah. You're actually maybe going to be educating people incorrectly. No, the, I've I've had people say to me <laughs> afterwards, like, I had to Google, like, I didn't uh, I didn't know like what was true and what was not, and I was like, oh my God, no, don't don't Google. Just assume that everything from this show is a lie. It's less about like queering history and more of like, okay, what's something everyone knows about the Lincolns, and then what would be, like, what would be something stupid that Mary Todd could do. We're celebrating another huge opening night on Broadway. It's a revival of the 1979 play Home, directed by Kenny Leon. We caught up with the stars at the opening. It's really special to see what these three actors do, you know, to see them play all these roles, to see them go on this emotional journey uh, that reminds us all that if you get knocked down, you can always get up, you know, you can get up, you know, and as corny as it sounds, if we just, you know, we just need a little more love in the world. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. So I'm excited to, to do this particular play. One of my favorite things uh, is the beautiful language that Sam Art Williams has crafted and the way it flows so easily between scenes and prose and, you know, you just kind of get, get it all in one fell swoop and also the many, many characters. That's, that's definitely a favorite part. The poetry of the writing is inherent. And so once the play starts, if you jump on that train, it takes off and it just goes and it goes and it pushes and it turns, it's like a roller coaster. And it's a beautiful, beautiful journey of struggle and triumph. And, um, and also getting back to your core values and your, your principles and what those really mean to you. You know, in a world where everything is chaotic and there's so much, um, you know, misinformation out there or so many different silos you can choose from, what's real for you? You know, I mean, that's what the play is about. What's real for you and can you stand up for that when it's inconvenient? And that's what my character, Cephas Miles, does. And when he does that, he pays a price. But even in paying that price, he learns that there are people who will always help you out. If you just keep crawling, people will pick you up. I get to step into many, many different characters and that's I, I've done something kind of like it, but not quite like this. And so I really love every night get to honor so many different voices at once in one play. Usually it's one person, one life. And so to really honor the many, many lives um, that are in this play, I, I love that a lot. I hope that uh this work just really takes wings after this. I hope that more theater companies, regional theater companies will produce it and see its value because it is just a phenomenal piece of work and I think everyone needs to see it. I think all actors should want to do it. It's not an easy piece, but it is so rewarding and fulfilling to, to bring it to life. It really has been for me. The 15th annual Jimmy Awards are now in the books. The Jimmys are a huge and amazing event that happens in New York City every year, featuring the absolute best of the best musical theater's talent from high schools all across America. The kids rehearsed, networked, and experienced all that New York City has to offer. At the end, those students actually perform on stage at Broadway's Minskoff Theater, home of the Lion King. We got to know the winners. Last night was magical and unbelievable, and yet I feel so, 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 so grateful. The amount of love and support that my community gave me from Midland, Michigan felt like I was walking into every room with a coat of armor with the amount of 
love and power that I get from those people. It just felt so grateful to win that moment for them just as much as it was for me. So it was the most memorable moment of my life. I will never forget this. I felt this overwhelming sense of accomplishment and, and gratitude. My family was up in the mezzanine and I could hear their screams over everybody else and uh, it was just great. Not only to hear my name called, but my father's name. Mm. And to be able to experience it with these 102 so kind people and they're just, uh, I, it's just, it's beyond words. Speechless. Speechless, <laughs> that's what it is. When they hear you, I'll be near you again. This was my first year ever getting nominated for my Regional Roads Awards program. My first year ever coming to the Jimmies. Uh, so, a lot of firsts, a lot of firsts, and uh, I, I've been trying to get here for the past three years, and it finally happened senior year, and I'm so, so grateful that it happens, and thank you to Broadway Dallas for sending me here, thank you to the Jimmy Awards for seeing me. This is my second year as a part of the Sutton Foster Awards, and I was not a finalist last year, and then this year it just happened to work out for me, and when I, I won, all of the memories of watching the YouTube videos and obsessively watching those medleys over and over and over again came flooding back to me and I was like, I'm gonna be that girl for some little kid out there. I'm gonna be that inspiration. That's winning enough. Like, that, the idea that I could be the reason why someone pursues their dream or I could be the reason why someone doesn't give up, that's, that's why I do this. That's what it's about. To anyone who's doubting the importance of arts education, and I'm saying this as a teacher of voice to a lot of students in Midland, Michigan, I just have to say that the art of theater and the art of storytelling is about connecting to humanity. It's about becoming an empathetic person so that you can make other people in the audience feel seen and heard and represented. And you can only do that if you become an empathetic and open person yourself. And so to do theater and take part of that, or even be a part backstage, or be a part of the producing team, you are opening yourself up to that empathetic viewpoint. And no matter who you are, no matter if, you know, you're not a great singer, you're not a great actor, there is value and importance to be found in arts education for every single person. The theater is very important. I would literally tell anyone who is going into marketing, business, Take a theater class, take an improv class, because it boosts your confidence and it makes you entertaining in the room. Not only that, but those that are already continuing theater and they're a little wish-washy about it, um, I want to say that what you're doing can change the world. It can change people's hearts, it can change people's minds, and it can give people ideas. That's the power that our craft has. It can really, like you said, touch humanity mm. and ah, that's why I love it so much. How you doing? I'm Joshua Boone playing Dallas Winston, also known as Dally in the Outsiders, and you're watching the Broadway show. And buckle up. Buckle up! Broadway just celebrated Juneteenth with a huge concert in Times Square. Tony winner Felicia Rashad was honored with the Juneteenth Legacy Award. The concert featured an entirely black Broadway cast of performers. Hello, McFly.
July, Back to the Future is one of Broadway's biggest shows. And now, Back to the Future the Musical is coming soon to a city near you, DeLorean and all. We got to know the stars. People are going to have their minds blown by this show, don't you think? Get ready, America. Your minds are about to be blown. Now, here's what you've got to do. You've got to get up. You've got to get up off of the sofa, turn off the Netflix, and come down and see Back to the Future, the musical. You won't believe your eyes. You can't believe what you're seeing. I watched it as a child, and I was obsessed with it as a child. And then I saw, like, the stunt ride when I went to Universal as a kid as well. So, like... This is sort of surreal to be in something that you grew up watching is it's so crazy. I've never seen a show with such electric audience reciprocation. It's something that happens in the space evokes this sense of living in the nostalgia, living out the movie. There's something that is insatiable about it. A lot of these adaptations of the characters are both inspired by the film, but then brought to life through the authenticity of the actor themselves. So seeing these iconic characters in different lights is going to be such a change in pace, and I think they're really going to love it. Doing a show like this where it's it might be some people's first experience with a musical, and that's a gift I'm really excited to give to families, you know, and how do you get dad to come and see a show? Pretty easy with Back to the Future. They're thinking Back to the Future, the musical, they're thinking the DeLorean, they're thinking the big epic spectacle, which we have, but we also have these really sweet moments, you know, there's times when that spectacle kind of goes away and you really just get to see these characters interact, and those are some of my favorite moments on stage that, you know, where we just get to talk to each other and really, you get to really like, I think audiences are expecting to cheer and I don't think they're expecting to cry. And I think a, sh a tear might be shed. Hi there, I'm Eddie Redmayne and you're watching The Broadway Show. Welcome back to The Broadway Show. I'm correspondent Perry Sook. Every good Broadway play or musical begins with its book. And you can find them all, plus anything else vaguely related to theater, here at the Drama Bookshop. Let's head inside and catch up with one of the stewards of the scripts. We are in a cozy corner of the Drama Bookshop with one of the assistant managers here, Mark Eugene Garcia. Mark, thanks so much for the time. Oh, thanks. I'm so happy to be here. What what a beautiful place to work. I mean, with the books all over the place, it, it's just kind of magical. What, what does it feel like coming here day to day? It's, it's amazing because you are always surrounded by the greats. Like people come in looking for specific monologues or maybe a specific workplace to kind of get into their theater mode. There's always some inspiration on the shelf, no matter what, no matter what you're in here for, whether it's acting or writing or any form of stagecraft, there's an answer on our shelves. It really is remarkable. And then you even have fun things I see like right over here, booze over Broadway. You oh know, my gosh. Yes. Just tangentially related, but but still magical and still part of the Broadway experience. Yeah, it's a community. It, it really is. Those who appreciate theater, those who do theater, those who create theater, it's all one big community that you can't have one without the other. And so we want to celebrate all of that. What is your day-to-day -day like here? You know, showing people things they're looking for or, or recommending plays? What What is your day-to-day? All day of the above. It's, it's really, uh, my day-to-day -day is kind of everything about theater. Something I really love about this place is that you don't know if the person who's asking you for a monologue, is this their way into grad school? Is this their next big audition? Are they creating their season? Like we have this magical ability to like influence theater because we're showcasing what stories we have and we have so many stories from all different types and it's kind of our job to bring that to the forefront. As a playwright yourself, do you ever uh, give pointers to people while they're writing? Or, I definitely uh... do. We're, we're lucky that we have so many talented people who work here. Uh, everyone is involved in the theater in some way, whether it's an actor, a writer, director, costumer, so on, uh, so many things. And I think we all get to give that little bit of information. So I definitely put my favorite books, books that have helped me, um, books that I think will inspire up on our uh, staff picks or just as recommendations people come in now uh, a as a writer I, I would ask you your favorite book here but I but I think it might be a it might be I, might, I might have a, I might have a little uh, key into what that would be would you tell uh, exactly. us a little about your play I'm not, gonna, not gonna not take an opportunity to showcase my show is coming up uh, eight tales of Pedro it's uh, my first published play I have another one coming out later but this is super exciting to have this year 
Um, it is a story of uh, Latine folk tales, but also a conversation on immigration. It was nice for me because one of my favorite parts of this is watching writers come in and see their work on our shelves <laughs> and see their stories being told here because it's exciting. It's exciting to see your work there. I've seen people come in and cry when they've seen their plays. I've seen people jump up and down. So it's very exciting to see those connections happen here and to be part of that. I love it. And that's going to do it for us. But for tickets or if you want to check out extended cuts of all these interviews, head over to Broadway.com. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show.